Life is good. I've said that before, and that statement, life is good. And I'm sure many, many people have said that as well. I've shared it from a couple different perspectives. When I've confessed it, here's one of the perspectives. But just as I said that, I just, I, uh, I saw one of my family members that's really near and dear to my heart. He's about 31 inches tall. And I just, I, when I see him smile sometimes, I'm like, oh, man, life is good. That's one of the perspectives. And there are times where, by faith, I've had such pressures in my life, but out of faith, we know what Scripture says, that faith is the substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not seen. That out of faith, that I've reached down by faith, knowing that the evidence of what I saw currently happening in my life, whatever circumstance, whatever pressure, they were coming against, but by faith I pulled down. I said, life is good. I've heard people say, well, that's life. I'm glad that Jesus didn't say it that way. <laughs> Can you imagine? Lord, I need you. He hey, that's life. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Jesus said that in this life, and he was very specific in how he spoke, you will have tribulation. Thanks, Lord. <laughs> really? Tribulation, <clears throat> that word that he used there is really defined in the, in the original language of Greek, pressure, oppressing, not oppressing, but oppressing. In this life, you will have pressure. But he said, take heart. I've overcome the world. He said, in this world, that pressure is coming. Pressure. With Jesus, you can overcome. With yourself and feeding on the pressures of life, people become depressed. All depressed is, is living under the pressures of what the Lord said was existing. Normal, everyday stuff. Jesus said that the answer to the pressures he talked about the things that I speak, these things I've spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. He prefaced what I just said. He prefaced that before saying that life, this world would bring pressure. He said, my desire for you is that you would have peace. Have any of you ever experienced any kind of peace in a storm? Sometimes it's, wow, how am I keeping my head level right now with this storm going on? Sometimes it's simple peace. You got a raincoat with a hood and it's raining. Wow, I'm out of that. You might get a little splash on the face, but you have a peace that you're not going to get soaked because you're covered. You're covered. I want to share a perspective of uh, a man named Job. Job. It's funny his name is spelled J-O-B. <laughs> Any of you ever had a pressures from a Job? <laughs> I got a new Job today. Praise the Lord. 
couple years in, a couple weeks in, sometimes you're like, whoa. <laughs> Job 7-7, seven, seven, he's, he's saying, oh, remember that my life is a breath. My eye will never again see good. Now, he was under some pressure, Job. He was under severe pressure. He was like, this life, just a vapor. But what's left of it, my eye will never see good again. That was his perspective. If you read through the book of Job, you'll see that in the end, some people don't understand how God operated in this, but in the end, Job never cursed God, but he cursed his own life. He cursed the day that he was born, the affliction that he had, the family that he lost, the things that he was under pressure with. And there came a point where God spoke to Job through a good friend. And this good friend said, paraphrasing Job, what you're saying isn't right. When we were all under affliction, there were times that you came and you spoke to us in that affliction. And you spoke words of wisdom. So now I'm going to speak these words of wisdom to you in your affliction. God is the one that can bring you out of this. There came a point where God said to Job, stand up like a man. Hear me. Whew, could you imagine? I've had my father and father figures at points get my attention in a good way. Meaning I was just, ah, just off in my own head doing things. And there was something that, hey, hey. And that attention kind of snapped me out of where my mind was going and focused on what the father was saying. This, this the father would say, you need to get right. You need to quit doing what you're doing and get right. I started off sharing that by saying two words, hey, hey. Brings back a memory just a few days ago. I was bucking some hay. <laughs> Recently, I, I had this urge to go to work with my son. And uh, my son's been working out on this farm, <clears throat> doing all kinds of farm stuff. And I thought, you know, gosh, it'd be good to spend some time with him. I just kind of want to see what his eyes see throughout his day. He, he's described this place to me before, and there are times that I know that he's working, and I'll be where I'm at, and I know he's at that place that he's described, but what is his eye seeing? What is his body feeling? What is going on? And I just thought, Lord, there should be a bring your father <laughs> to work day. He came over, and I said, Dane, what do you think about this? You know, maybe you should bring your father to work. And he goes, funny you should say that. <laughs> the owner of the farm has this, hey. Oh, well, what did I get myself into here? I just thought I'd kind of go and shadow him a little bit. You do the labor. I'll do the watching. That's what I wanted. And I was like, all right. I went. We were stacking hay in this loft of a barn. Some of you may have done that before. I've kind of shot arrows into bales of hay before, but <laughs> never bucked the stuff, never stacked it. We were up at a pretty high loft. There was this 40-foot like elevator with teeth on it. You throw the hay on from below, and I was in the top. My son was on the bottom. Throughout the day, I kind of watched him. 
And I just, I was loading it and st we were stacking up there. And once I got over myself and how hot I was, I couldn't help but remember what it was that I wanted to do. I wanted to see what my son was seeing. All of a sudden I became like this laborer. I've joked with many of you before that that laboring gene and this Mexi man, sometimes I believe that it just bypassed me. <laughs> yes. There was another one of my brethren there. Uh, his name was Lewis. Nice, beautiful accent. You know, my people type of accent. He wouldn't say, hey, man. He'd say, hey, man. <laughs> he was down there working. I'm like, God, these guys are going for it. So I began to, once I got over myself, watch my son. And this truck just would come with these just massive stacks of hay and just dump it hit the ground and I, I watched as my son would grab these bales and he'd throw them on there and they'd come up to me and I'd take them and he'd throw them on there and they'd come up to me I'd take them and I thought man look at this mound that's in front of them truck after truck after truck and the Lord even that moment I was thinking as a biological, natural father of my son began to speak to my heart about how he works and how he thinks. That you may be under pressure in this life and have mounds of stuff on you. And there is a couple ways for us to handle it. As a believer in God, is to trust and magnify him. The Bible says for us to lean not on our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge the Lord. How do we do that? I think that is one of the biggest struggles most people have getting out of your own head and trusting in the Lord. And it's hard to get out of your own head because your own head is sees the pressures that the Lord Jesus was talking about, feels the pressures, feels the tribulation, has a stack of things that need to get done. Some good, some fun, some I got to deal with that and everything in between. And your head and your mind and your eyes see this all the time. And how do we let go of that and trust in the Lord? I believe that is one of the areas right there where most people struggle. We uh, got a break from our labor a couple of times. And I had prepared that morning. I had this big gallon size container. I packed it full of ice the night before, about halfway, filled it up with water, knowing that once it gets out in the sun, oh boy, it's going to melt and it's just going to be that perfect icy temperature in the midst of all the heat. And we went down and there was several other men there having conversations, not all the type of conversations that my son and I were having. And we sat in the shade and let this breeze just kind of hit us. And the breeze was coming and it was warm, but when it hit the shady side of this barn, it just... It was just that right relief. And I asked my son, would you like a drink? And he had a pretty big water bottle too. And he, yes, I would. He put his down and he took mine. And he goes, mine is quite warm. And he drank, he's like, oh, and it just cooled him down. And we just began to converse right there. And interestingly, there were people around us talking and a couple of men I couldn't help but hear dropping some F-bombs. No judgment, just observation. And we were talking about the things of the Lord, the F-bombs, arms reach away. And we just kept talking about the things of the Lord. And these stories, these things just kept coming up. And we just kept talking about the things of the Lord and how grateful we were and for life. And we were just as dirty and as stinky <laughs> as they were. But under that pressure, our conversation was different. We didn't just choose in that moment. We chose a long time ago. and We've continued to trust in the Lord. And see, there are people right beside you. There are things in our life. And as these people right beside you are walking in life, they're going to have different perspectives. And God wants to know, what is yours? Do you really want to trust me? Sometimes we know we should. There's so many things. We're, 
we are created in the image of God. There's, there is truth that is inside of us. And we know what right is. And we know what wrong is. You don't have to know scripture and verse, forward and backward, but you just know what right is. And sometimes these pressures come and they're so heavy, we just don't want to choose what right. I know what right is, but right now, enough. (laughs) I agree. I had this vision of my son loading this hay and afterwards it just really spoke to me and this is how we do it. That there may be things in front of you Lots of these pressures, but you take that which is in front of you and unload it and let it go up to God. And God's already got an answer prepared. And as you draw near to him by leaning not on your understanding, releasing prayers of faith, sometimes talking to him and you can have so much pressure going on in your head, but the faith in your heart can be boiling at the same time. Or maybe it's just a small simmer. Maybe you just barely turned it on and this is what's louder. But if you just take that effort and talk to the Lord in those moments, just unload them, cast them up in prayer, and you're still busy in life, the Father's going to have something prepared for you. And that when you come down and you commune together, he's going to give you something that's very refreshing. And it can be right beside chaos going on. Now, as a father... I think it's instinctual to be a little protective of your your children. And even though my son is almost a half foot taller than I am and younger, better looking, I believe, strapping, got that logger beard. I, I wish I could grow one like that. We were later in the day loading some hay and one of these gentlemen that was talking, he, Dane was in the barn, he was kind of stacking some stuff, and I saw him just kind of looking there, contemplating for a second. It was like, you know, hay bales, I I figured it out, it's like that game Jenga, right? Except for, in the end, you don't want to pull one out. (laughs) You're just trying to stack them up good so they stay good. (laughs) And he was contemplating, this guy had this bale, and he looked at him and he said, "Are, are you ready to move yet? Dane goes, oh, yeah, 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 I apologize, get out of here. Well, one of this guy's friends said, well, that was pretty nice of you to speak to him like that. And the gentleman says, well, I don't know him. And he said, but if it would have been you, I would have told you to get the F out of the way. (laughs) And they just, boy, that was like light and a fuse. They just went off on each other in a nice, friendly way. I said, oh, the terms of endearment, let them flow I literally said that out loud. Oh, we've been saying this stuff to each other for I don't know how effing long. And and, and just going off and just trickling inside. I was just paused right there for just a second because I I saw him looking at my son and I knew he wanted him to move. And I'm like, I heard how he talked before. What are you going to say? Because I might take off my pastor badge. (laughs) And and he just said, "Are, are you ready to move yet? But these guys just kept going back and forth. And I was like, ah, that's interesting. At the end of the day, one of the gentlemen, not the one that asked my son to move, came to me. We just were all finished up, hours of work, and he came to me and he said, "Um," he kind of, I could tell that me and my son were getting ready to leave and everybody was crowded. He kind of made his way over and he goes, hey, um," I said, hey, it was nice to meet you. And he's like, nice to meet you too. Um, Could you, uh," he said, I'm sorry about that, that language earlier. He said, I, I apologize. And uh, in, instinctively, I knew that somebody, probably the owners of the property who knew my son, probably said, God, you guys were really going off today. Maybe there was a, there was a man of the cloth here today. Mm-hmm. And I just said to him, I said, you know, I've heard worse. And by the way, I've said worse. It's all good. And he just smiled. Thank you so much. And he laughed. And I thought, isn't it interesting 
that right inside of us, knowing right, if we don't know somebody, sometimes we'll hold back and I won't go off on you, but I know you and I'll go off on you. And then they go off and then when you know what right is, sometimes you feel a little dirty and you want to go back and go, forgive me. It's a choice. It's a choice. There are things that are going on in each of our lives where at any given moment we have the ability. They, they say, brain scientists have said that you have the ability every 10 seconds to regulate a thought. Every 10 seconds, you can stop and regulate a thought. You can just, okay, I'm thinking, well, what do I think about what I'm thinking? And what decision am I going to make? We have that ability. Why would you stop and regulate a thought? If you're a believer in the Lord and in that context, what am I thinking, Lord? Should I, should I, what should I do in this moment? Should I ask this person, are you ready to move? Or get the F out of the way. Right? Because I know none of you think this way, but even, well, I should, I'll take out the word even. Uh, mark that, please, out of there. <laughs> I'll be driving sometimes, and I don't have an issue with road rage, but there are some times that I'll get going so much in my own head, in my own mind, and I'll be just, I won't be regulating thoughts. I won't be talking to the Father. I won't be unloading things to Him and saying prayers. I just got stuff going on, and somebody will pull out in front of me, and I'm like, and it's just these thoughts start going off of what I want to say. And it's, it's right there in my lips. And I'm like, God, what, what is wrong with you? I start trying to have this self-talk. But man, in my head, I'm like, I really, 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 really want to say what's right there. Oh, yeah, Lord. That still small voice. <laughs> Do you really want to get out of the way? No. No, I'm like, get out of the way. When you have that ability to know that this pressure is going to come in life, that Jesus said life is good, and in me you can have peace. And I'm talking when you start just tapping into the Lord and, and, and remembering what he's done for you. It was on my, on my heart and in my head a little bit this morning to ask if somebody had something to share. And as I contemplated this, Lord says, it's all right. You don't have to do that. But I, I, wanted you, I, I believe he put it there for a reason. When you are in a challenging place, you should be able to look back at a breadcrumb trail of your own life and think about some ways that God helped you out. Amen. That really begins to kind of stir some stuff up, Right? That actually will tell things and pressures to get out of the way that even though life is not going to be a runway and open and just ready to, you can just navigate without anything blocking your way. That's not going to happen. But when you start remembering some of the things that God has gotten you through, it's amazing. My wife and I received a text early this morning, oh, 5 something a.m., this is my little sister. She was in the hospital. Yeah, she's okay. And, um, but she was going through a pretty, pretty intense pain. And she reached out and asked for prayer. And you know what my head told me? I was a little foggy. You know what my head told me? I got to get ready for church. <laughs> Seriously. I got to get ready for church, and yes, we'll, we'll pray. I started to text, backspace, 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 backspace. I can't send that to my sister. All of a sudden, I started remembering all the prayer, all the times that God worked through her to take me from a lower level to an upper level, to guide, to help, to coach, to mentor me, because she had been through some things spiritually that I was first experiencing. That when I had troubles and, and trials, she was right there every single time. And here I was so religious that I got to go to church and, hey, I'll just text you and everything will be okay. And quick little religious prayer. Yes, we're in agreement. But I'm like, she is in pain. Absolute intense pain. And so I just stopped what I was doing. 
getting ready for church. And when I'm talking about getting ready for church, I'm not talking about, you know, putting on my pantalones, my shirt. I'm talking about oh, I was getting spiritual and listening for the Lord. <laughs> These are thoughts that really went through the reader board of my mind. Doesn't she know it's Sunday morning? This is what pastors do. They get ready for, this is my little sister. I'm just being transparent with you. Maybe you guys don't ever have messed up thoughts like this. Maybe I need you to come up and pray for me. Maybe I need you to help come up here and just, because I, I want to talk to some people that have some of these messed up thoughts. Because if you've been through some stuff, I need some help. I need some ministering too. I need some prayers. And I just stopped. And I said, Lord, that was it. Lord. And all of a sudden, my wife and I began to minister. And I started to see that my wife had gone through something exactly the same that my sister had. And that we walked this thing out. And even though I wasn't experiencing the pain that she did, I could see and I knew her well, that the type of pain that she was in. And what she had experienced and the prayer that we had to go through in the hospital when the doctors were saying, you need to do this and you need to get that out. But something in her spirit said this, she didn't have a peace about this. And my sister was hearing that same thing, but because my wife and I walked it out, all of a sudden, wisdom of life and trusting in God, this breadcrumb trail of what he had done for us was able to be transferred to somebody who had transferred so much hope for us. This, see, this is what it's all about. When you go through something and you trust God, he's going to bring you to a place of peace, health, rest, restoring you. It may not be easy. There's going to be pressures that come along. Pressure creates pain. But when you are able to do that, that now becomes something that you've trusted in God and that you should be able to share with somebody else or share with yourself that, hey, he brought me through that type of thing. He can take me through this. And somebody else was going through stuff. And you can put down what you're thinking and what you're going through that you might be able to help somebody else. For the sake of time, I won't share with you the rest of the testimony, but you know the last thing that my sister texts, is there anything I can pray for you? Her pain went from a level 10 to a level one as we began to intercede and give her direction and pray with her. And she sends me a picture. Her hair's kind of flopped off to the side and she's in the hospital bed, smiling. Is there anything I can do for you? And you know what she did? We just said, hey, we're on our way to church. And she began to pray for you. It doesn't matter what you're going through. There's always a God just looking down on you. Just waiting. Are you going to send up a prayer? Because when you do, this is the Lord's prayer. Thy will be done in heaven as it is on earth. And he'll come down and meet you, give you a cool drink, sit with you in the shade, give you direction. And you can be within earshot of the world. And often that's what it is. And all you have to do is just take that time, that time to step away from the pressure and the words and the things that are going on and just get into the shade in a cool place with him and then just listen. He'll refresh you. And often this refreshing is just enough for you to stand back up and go back at it. This is how much the Lord loves you. I'm going to leave you with some... with a few scriptures, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20. I got this for a gift for my son. I believe it might have been his birthday, but I literally printed out Proverbs, the whole chapter of Proverbs 4. I gave it to my son. In verse 20 says, my son, and this word here is a Hebrew, bane, and it means children. So if you hear son and you're a girl, you're like, ah, I don't have to listen. No, or I feel left out. It's, you're included. <laughs> Give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. Put away from you a deceitful mouth and put perverse lips far from you. Let your eyes look straight ahead and your eyelids look right before you. 
Ponder the path of your feet and let all your ways be established. Do not turn to the right or to the left. Remove your foot from evil. When it says remove your foot from evil, do not let these words come out of your mouth. Evil, or I'm not an evil person. When you look at what this word evil is describing, it just means things that aren't, they're bad. They're of bad report. People look at them, well, this is going to, this is going to hurt. This is going to be bad. Look at the weather today in the Northwest. You see three numbers to describe the temperature, not two. Oh, this is going to be bad. Did you know what's going to happen? People are already preparing their mind. They had a week ago when they saw that. Did you hear about the weather? Did you, did you see? Do you know how hot it's going to get? Oh, this could be, yeah. This has happened before, the weather, triple digits. Mm-hmm. I'm still here. You are too. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Get some ice water prepared. Some cool rags. Easy for you to say, Pastor, you got AC. Never used to. You know what we had? Cool rags. Spray bottles. Put water. Splash it. I mean, all night. I remember just spraying myself at night. Praise the Lord, I'm here. That's what God can do for you. There are things that he's going to have you do to move in this natural realm. You may not be able to escape the temperature of the natural realm, but your mindset internally can be differently to help you go through that with peace. To not have your fuse be so short that you go off. (laughs) Praise the Lord. (laughs) You know what? Sometimes in class, when we get the giggles, right? And the teacher's telling you to shut your face. (laughs) Not here. Katie Kate's, that blesses my heart. Did you have a timer for every hour to spray yourself? Oh, (laughs) yes. It was called the temperature. I get hot. (laughs) That's what we did. You know, we really thought we progressed when they they designed a spray bottle with a little fan in front. (laughs) Right? Today I got it. Now they got these things they call air conditioners that kind of do all that for you. But that literally we were like, we're stepping up in the world. We are out of the ghetto type stuff. No more wet rags. We actually got a spray bottle with a little battery in there and a little fan. Whatever it takes. Yes, I'm grateful for AC. But you know what? I could easily go back to a wet rag if I needed to. Thank God that in the moment of heat, he he can direct you. Don't get caught up on it's going to get hot out there. Yes, it is. Hmm. Jesus said this, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Why did I say Jesus said that? was in 2 John 5, 4. Jesus, at that point, wasn't alive like he was in the book of John. But Jesus is the Word. And as the Word has been saying that, I think of that as the Lord is saying it to me. He said, through the Word, whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, our faith. Our faith. Why would you need a victory? Well, victories are good. You're either on the victorious end or the losing end. But in the middle, it's a fight. It's a fight. Fight with faith is what the Lord's saying. Take the load that's in front of you and just give it to me. And the Father's there and he'll receive those prayers just like I was receiving those bales from my son. And I couldn't wait to get down and fellowship with him. That's how the Lord is. He's just smiling, always faithful, never wanting to leave or forsake you. And when the word of God says that God turns from evil or shuns the evildoer, sometimes we can be evil in thought, and it's not like God is pushing us off. It's just that he can't hear words of unbelief. But it's those that pray in faith. Those are the ones that can make contact. Amen? I pray somehow 
some way that this blessed you. Jesus is the way. He's the truth. He's the life. All you got to do is just stop, talk. Sometimes you don't even have to stop. You just keep going. Just talk. Just talk. Praise the Lord.